Thank you. Okay, so my name is uh, Maria Alfaro Contreras, and I'm uh, from the University of Alicante, and I'm uh, going to talk about uh, the paper that Javier uh, Valero Mas, Jose Manuel Iniesta, and I uh, wrote about neural architecture for exploiting the components of agnostic notation in optical music notation. So I'm going to begin with a really quick introduction about what optical music recognition is, because I think that up to this point, we all kind of know what it is. So as it had been said before, uh, optical music recognition, also known as OMR, is the research field that aims at obtaining a structured digital representation of the music content present in a sick music image. So the current state of the art uh, in this field consider techniques that follow an end-to-end -end or holistic approach. And what is this end-to-end -end approach? This means that uh, the system, this OMR system, process the image of a music score and retrieve the symbol that appeared therein in just a single step. And to transcribe such content to retrieve those symbols, this system uh, uses uh, an agnostic uh, representation that uh, my colleague uh, Antonio have uh, used to and explained before. And uh, the name uh, agnostic comes because uh, this representation is based on the graphical content of the symbol rather than the musical meaning. So when we are considering this type of representation, a music symbol are identified by two components. That is, uh, we identify music symbol, symbol by their state and by their uh, vertical position uh, on the staff that uh, we have called for this word face. And uh, the thing is that when, when OMR, uh, when holistic OMR system uh, are trained and uh, use this, this type of representation, uh, this dual nature of the music symbol is ignored during the learning process because these two features are treated as just a uh, one single uh, category. So uh, what we want uh, to do in, in this paper is uh, see how we can exploit this distinctive feature that a uh, music notation has uh, comparing to other similar uh, domain uh, as such that could be, for example, this that use similar approaches to transcribe the content of an of a, of a image. So uh, to know uh, how we could do this, uh, we must first know uh, the me methodology behind uh, the current state of the art. And the current uh, end-to-end uh, state of the art in the OMR system is a, a model based on uh, convolutional recurrent neural networks. And this type of model uh, have a, a block uh, of convolutional layers that are followed by a block or recurrent layers. And the convolutional block uh, is responsible for learning how to uh, process the input image that is, uh, is learning uh, uh, the, the relevant features of the input image so that the recurrent block can interpret this feature as a term uh, in terms of a uh, sequences of musical symbols. To train this uh, type of model, we use the connectionist temporal classification loss function, the CTC loss function. And it's basically, we use it because it's a, a alignment free uh, loss function. That is, uh, we don't need a alignment between the input and the output uh, of the model. So, this is uh, in the in this slide you can see um, an scheme that briefly represents uh, the current state of the art methodology, and we are going to consider uh, this uh, the baseline architecture for for this work. So um, what what uh, we want to do, as I said before, is uh, learn how to exploit the dual nature of music symbol. So uh, as our premise. Uh, we pose a question. What if instead of relying on just one single uh, convolutional recurrent neural network to process both features, uh, we dedicate one to each feature? That is, instead of just having one uh, CRNN, we have two CRNN that are uh, concurrently exploiting the safe and the vertical position of the musical symbol. 
But as uh, finally we want to uh, extract the full transcription of the score, uh, this network must merge at one point. So depending on the merging point, we are going to see that we have three possible different X scenarios. So let me show you really quickly what we consider our starting point and these uh, three different scenarios visually so we, we can have a more clear idea. So our initial scheme will look like, like this. We have one a convolutional recurrent neural network that processes the shape of the musical symbol and another one that processes the vertical position of the star. So depending on how, um, um, depending on where we merge uh, these two models, we have three different integration policies. If we join them uh, after the convolutional block, uh, we find ourselves as a first at the first scenario, and we are going to call this scenario free uh, RNN. If we merge them uh, after the first uh, layer of the recurrent block, we will have another scheme that we have called inter uh, RNN. And finally, if we do it after the second recurrent layer, we will have the last scenario that we have considered and that we have called post RNN. Uh, and now uh, to evaluate uh, which one of these three different scenarios that we have come across, uh, we are going to uh, test all of them with two different uh, corpora. That's how you will see later, they have a different uh, graphical aspect. So uh, our result can be more uh, clear if we're testing on different corpora. So the first uh, corpus that we are going to use is uh, known uh, as in Laura Seco. And uh, it basically have a uh, 155 type C uh, pages. And the second one that you can see here is called a uh, Capitan that uh, actually uh, Enrique has just introduced it uh, later uh, before in the presentation. And it has a uh, 19, 19 96 pages and is a, as you can see, had handwritten music. So we're going to evaluate a, our model using the symbol error rate a, because it's a, the state of the art evaluation metric for this type of a, OMR system. And to do a, re, a really quick recap, this metric, what it does is a, it a, calculate the average a number of elementary editing operation that is insertion, deletion, or substitution that are required to match the uh, sequence predicted by the model with the actual one with the ground truth uh, sequence and is just normalized by the length of the later. So let me show you the result we have obtained. And in this figure, uh, you can see the result that we have obtained for the both corpora and the different scenarios considered in this work uh, in terms of the symbol error rate. And since the experiment had been uh, performed following a cross validation scheme, uh, the figure, the error figure that appear here are uh, those of the, uh, the average value uh, obtained for each of the cases. So if we take a look at this uh, figure, we can see that uh, actually all the proposed architecture of the uh, three different uh, scenarios uh, improve the result obtained by the baseline model. And we can also see that uh, the uh, second scenario, which we have called inter-RNN, that is the one that does the merging after the first uh, recruitment layer, and in the figure is uh, the one that is uh, highlighted using uh, green lines, is uh, the one that uh, constantly achieves the best error rate for all the scenarios considered. And also we can see that uh, if we take a look at the uh, capital error uh, uh, figures, the, those are actually notably higher than the ones we have obtained with the Ilaurosoko set. And this is a rather expected result since uh, there is a graphical uh, variability that is inherent to the handwriting that data. Uh, 
in comparison with the typeset format, that is the one that the Laurecepo set had. And this uh, graphical variability supposes a, a drawback for the recognition algorithm. So to finish, uh, let me just tell you a really quick summary of our work and what we plan to do next. So uh, I have just uh, explained <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> uh, and holistic approach, an end-to-end -end approach that uh, tried, tries or looks for exploiting the uh, dual nature of agnostic music notation. And we have seen that uh, it works and we have considered three different uh, scenarios based on the merging point. That is where do we uh, uh, fusion uh, the shape and the vertical position of the symbol feature. And uh, we have seen uh, based on those on the result of two different compora that actually the merging point uh, affects the result. And when we do the, the merging uh, after the first recurrent layer, uh, we actually obtain uh, really good results. So we could say that the inter RNA model is the one that is yielding the uh, best result out of the three uh, proposed. And in light of the conclusion that we have obtained, uh, with this work open us a new research point that we would like to address. Uh, one is that given the variability uh, of the music annotation and uh, the relative, relative scarcity of the existing label data, uh, we would like to explore some uh, transfer learning technique to see how uh, um, we could exploit the knowledge uh, that we have learned from one purpose uh, to one other and also see if we can expand this uh, approach to different type of music like uh, homophonic music and see how it, how it works. So that's all and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. I have to say, I really like this to have like at least a small uh, audience here that gives an actual <laughs> applause. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> something <laughs> that it's better than just, um, I mean, the clap emojis are fine, but unfortunately they haven't ad introduced a feature where you can hear something <laughs> about this. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Um, are there questions? Please raise your hand. Yes, Ichiro. Hi, Hi Maria. Maria. Whoa, I'm, I'm feedbacking. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, my question is whether, see, there are two types of symbols, right? So there are types of symbols, mostly notes that can go up and down, and there are another set of symbols that basically don't change the position, like the mm -hmm. rest, right? So, have you considered doing that somehow separate them like you know whether if it's quarter note or half note or minima or whatever the the the, the position relationship between shape and position is relatively the same so i wonder if you consider that sort of a hierarchical type of classification where you know they're movable symbols that are behaved basically the same way regardless of its shape and there are other ones that don't move uh f for certain group of shapes again regardless of it, its particular shape so i'm saying there i think there are two types of sh shapes that one that moves one that don't and one and for those that do move uh you can also group them you know in the same sort of way uh, and have you? My question is: Have you considered that? I mean, I I I understand your point because, for example, uh, black uh, all the breasts uh, they tend to be always in the same position. But if we could like say that there is actually just uh, they don't have two features; they only have one feature, and we could categorize them just in one single category, but um, I don't know if then it will be because 
due to the approach we are using, we need to we need them to have a to a feature. So uh, because the the model outputs those uh, two features. So I don't know. Maybe we could look at it and say if, if we could add some restrictions. So when a certain category um, is predicted uh, to always use uh, the the same vertical position for that category, but uh, I think that that should be done at not at the neural level, but just the, after the prediction, then see what the model has predicts and we if we identify that category, uh, uh, always use all the same. A vertical position a, independently of what the model has predicts. So we, we could consider that. We haven't looked thought about it, but it's an, a nice point. Thank you. Thank you.